God is a good, good father. And we are so glad that you are joining us for Hope today. And you see that there's, we have a new addition that he's like here with us. You're gonna hear just in a moment about what he's gonna be talking about today that's really going to encourage you, all of you dads that are out there. But I'm so happy, Tom, Amanda, and I, we are back together. And so tell us, Tom. Well, and this gentleman that we haven't introduced yet is uh, Pastor Zach Blair, and we're so glad to have them. Let me ask you a question to the men out there. What type of father do you want to be? And what steps should you take to become the, that father that you want to be? Well, Pastor Zach, he's going to answer that for us today. And uh, give me one, give me one like tease there, Zach, about what are we going to share with people today? We're going to share with, uh, with fathers about intentional connection. I feel that many fathers feel the need to be perfect, but there's no such thing as a perfect father. Yeah. We can be intentionally connected. Yeah, important stuff. You're going to want to hang around just in, a, in just a minute. We'll be, we'll be going. The book is called The Father Code by Zach Blair. There is so much good stuff in here. You don't want to miss it. That's right. So call up those dads or brothers or sons in your life and get them to tune into Cornerstone. If you don't make our morning program, catch one of our re-airs or watch us on ctvn.org at your leisure. But make sure you let others know about this book because I really do believe that it's going to inspire men. And we need the men. I know there's been like all the women movements, Sydney and I, you know, seeing happen, but we need the men in our communities to rise up and be who they're called to be. Yeah, when men get into position, it makes us all a better nation. It makes us all better people. And so we're just so excited to have this conversation because I do think, you know, one thing that when in a lot of churches you see there's predominantly a lot of women, but we do need the men to rise up. And I know the enemy is going hard after men in these times and seasons because he knows that when you have the men at the head and the home, Ooh, there's certain things that happen in the family. So it's really important that we have this conversation today. Absolutely. Well, again, uh, I would like to introduce Pastor Zach Blair. Uh, Tell us a little bit about where you're from, your church, and, and, and what, what's going on in your life right now. Yeah, I grew up in the uh, Ambridge, little steel town, uh, Beaver County, you know, so you were in Bel Vernon. I've never went to Bel Vernon in my life. I didn't even <laughs> like know where that was, world, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, so Beaver County boy through and through, but uh, uh, went to Geneva College. Uh, you know, I grew up and uh, didn't, uh, I, I knew God, but I didn't have a really strong relationship with him. And uh, uh, I really came to the Lord at Geneva College and uh, at, through the football program there, Gino DeMarco was, just put his arm around me. And you know, through the years, uh, my wife and I, we served in ministry for 15 years. And uh, now we, uh, plant, we planted a church about six years ago going on right now uh, in Robinson, which yeah. is great. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. What's the name of your church? Hill City Church. Hill City Church, yeah. right, great. Yeah. Well, great to have you, Zach. Let Thank me you. ask you about fathers then. Pastors, you have a lot on your plate. Yeah. Why write a book about fathers now? Uh, I, I just feel that such a need for men to have good relationships, not only with their children, but one another. You know, my heart bur burdens for men because we, we have so much pressure on us in so many different areas, and we don't really know how to connect and how to let that pressure out, you know? So that pressure exudes itself in, in our parenting sometimes. And, and we, we want to be good dads. We want to be great fathers, but we just don't know how. And so this book is to essentially give six timeless principles to men to hold each other accountable to in the context of groups. Uh, you know, I, I didn't write this to be a bestseller. I just want to help men it should be. Though. That's it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but, you know, I just want to help men connect with, the, with each other and connect with their children. And through the years of youth ministry, I saw that the children who had intentional connection, the father who was intentionally connected, they succeeded and they made it through the most difficult times. And so many stories are in that book of people overcoming and, and able to overcome because of the love of their father or the encouragement of their father, their relationship with their father. So I just wanted to put those principles out there because I saw these principles were timeless. Well, I, and, and we're gonna get to all those, uh, the, the, the different uh, connection points here, the different mm -hmm. uh, you know, father codes. But let me ask you, um, tell me the story because I think it's really a key in your life and in the book. Tell me the story about your father and yeah. his, his story. Yeah, my father is a good man. He's very quiet and he's very, uh, he's, he's the type of man that I've never heard anybody say anything negative about him. I mean, if somebody didn't like my dad, there's something clearly wrong with them because he just is so kind and he serves everybody, you know? Um, and there's a, a part in the book where I, I, I tell the story of a little bit of frustration that I had with my dad. And, uh, 
And I think we all naturally go through that. We have to be honest about that. There's rubs, you know, with, with your upbringing. And our parents will naturally, they'll even say to us, hey, you know, we didn't do everything perfect, but just try to be better than us, you know, just keep, you know. And so we take those principles. But we were at the, we were at the uh, ocean with my dad and, you know, he's quiet and he, he's kind of slow and I'm more fast paced and I have a lot to say. And uh, I'm like, where's my dad right now? Where is he? And he was, he was my wife, I was annoyed by it, but my wife pointed out, she said, look at what your dad's doing. And he, he picked out uh, independent, he, these seashells for my kids. And just one was like a strong one that was for my youngest, you know, one was like shimmering and that was for my middle who's super creative. And then the other one was the perfect one, which is for the oldest, you know, he likes things to be ordered and organized, right? And so uh, he was doing that. And my, my, my wife said, Zach, every time your dad is picking out a seashell for them, he's telling you he loves you. You know, he's a quiet man. And so he didn't say much growing up, but he, I learned that day he said it through his actions. And I felt at, that, at the beach that day, the Lord gave me a vision of him that gave me so much compassion for him because he was, a fatherless, he was a fatherless son. And one of the best things that he did for me was he never left me, you know? He stayed with us no matter what, he was always there. He worked so hard to uh, provide for us as a family and um, his presence throughout my life meant it means the world, you know, it means the world. He gave me something that he didn't himself receive, you know, and I think too many men are, are stuck in, well, I didn't get this, I didn't get this. They get stuck in bitterness and they don't have a vision for their future. You can't just say what you don't want to be. You have to know who you want to be. And my dad did that for me, you know, he said, yeah. I, no matter what, he didn't leave. Yeah, and then you know? that was his story that he didn't have that connection right. in, uh, with his father. But that was your that's your that your first code is that we never leave. We never leave. Yeah. So let's go to the second one. Mm -hmm. We're both there and present. So talk about that. Men yeah. being there and present. Well, uh, and you guys jump in here. Don't get, let's get the, the, yeah. the female perspective here totally. as well. <laughs> I think we all understand how difficult it is to, to be fully engaged. And, and uh, there's so many distractions, you know. Uh, we have a text message that comes through and, you know, social media and we have work messages, emails. We don't, we don't have a time to disconnect. And so we have to. We have to have intentional time with our children. We have to be both there and present. You can be in the room and actually not be present with your child, but you have to be physically there and also mentally, emotionally, spiritually there as well. And that's what that principle is about. Yeah, that's so right. good. I know in my own household, like uh, growing up, we, like, we went through some really traumatic seasons. My mm -hmm. dad did. And I can remember there were moments where he'd be there but not present. Yes. But I watched the Lord heal him mm -hmm. really through worship because oh, he played wow. a guitar. Yeah. And so like watching my dad persevere and lean into God in those hard seasons really helped shape me mm -hmm. that you, you know, do that or going beyond himself to help someone else. So it is imperative like for our dads to be present. I, I love that you said it. that was my post this year mm -hmm. that I just thank my dad for being present right, right. in my life. The older I get, the more I just appreciate that he was present. He was there. And it's yeah. so important. Yeah. And although the book is, is formulated a little bit more about the values of that, mm -hmm. there are intentional things that we can do to be present with our children, to know. Mm -hmm. And I heard one person say, I spend 15 minutes of individual time with each of my children every day. And if I can't do that, then I'm, I'm too busy. Uh, you know, there's a, a, appropriate eye contact, appropriate touch, appropriate attention, appropriate discipline. All of those things help us to intentionally connect and be both there and present. But we have to fight for that connection. We have to fight for in, it. In fact, your son said something interesting when you had a mishap with your ankle. What yeah. did he say? You read this book so well. I, I appreciate that. I read that. it. <laughs> uh, he said, you know, I had broken my ankle. I still have a, I have a scar going from here to here. I have a plate in here. And I, I wasn't the same for about a year, you know, 95% uh, use of it right now. And uh, my son said, Zach, Dad, I don't, I don't mind. He didn't call me Zach. I don't know how it came out. But he said, Dad, I don't mind that you got injured and I hope I don't get in trouble. I'm like, you're not in trouble with me? Well, why? And he said, because we've been playing video games and we've been, we've been watching movies together. And my, one of my pastors said, I told him that story and like, man, this has actually been good for my family. And my pastor said, because, you, because you're, he has all of you right now. You know, planning a church is crazy. You know, yeah. it's like building an airplane in midair. You know, <laughs> it's hard to be both there and present. And sometimes it takes the circumstances of life 
you know, in the circumstances of life, God will use those circumstances to help us to reshape and, and you know, get back to our, our value. Yeah. yeah. Like Zach, one thing yeah. I just appreciate because I think you're, we're in the same generation or you mm -hmm. like a Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of men out there that unfortunately they don't have men, that they, or they yeah. didn't have fathers to grow up. So what are some things that you have learned and some tips and tools that you could tell young dads that are out there that might be terrified of the whole fact of like, I have this child, I don't mm -hmm. know what to do. What are some things that they can do to be intentional to love on yeah. their Sydney, kids? Sydney, I think, I think the, that's such a good question. And I think the best thing that I can tell men right now is that they are the man that God has chosen for their children. I'm getting all emotional thinking about it because I think a lot of times, like I remember holding my son for the first time, you know, I was 25 years old and, and I'm holding him and I'm like, I'm going to ruin his life. You know, like I really thought that because I didn't know anything. I'm like, what am I going to do? You know, I, I like, am I going to, am I going to mess him up? Am I going to, you know, but no, like this child that I'm holding in my hands, like God, he, he's called me to, to love this child and this love that I feel it, it's, it's, it's from heaven. Like this love that I feel for him is from heaven. And so God has, he is, I am the father that God has called me to, to you know, to be, you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to fight to be that father, you know, um, for that child. I think that's so important. I appreciate how like emotional you've got because I have friends that like male friends that they were like, they had that moment, like, oh my gosh, yeah. like, what am I going to do? Like, we're going to, I have like friends that have, you know, have had newborns are like, here we go. Like you, you just, you have the baby. There's no manual. Right. It's right, just like right. le le relying, <laughs> like literally relying on the Holy yeah. Spirit. So I appreciate like just your sincerity in your heart and uh, just getting thank emotional. You. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. You know, we were in the hospital and uh, we have the car carrier. We're gonna, about to take our son out and we were like, okay, so they like trust us with this <laughs> child, this life, you know, <laughs> it's so overwhelming, you know, but it doesn't have to be, mm -hmm. you know. Thank you. Well, I, I think that that's such a key. I've told young guys, I said, none of us, none of us guys are ready to be dads. You know, you just right. sort of learn as right. you go, right? right. You right. learn as you go and, and you, you trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, God's put us, we're the right person mm -hmm. for, that, for that, that child. But let me ask you about uh, another principle and another story here. Mm -hmm. um, our hands will bring love, not pain. Tell me about the broken window uh, your grandpa's broken window story, because yeah. I love that story. Yeah, my, my grandfather was a very strong man and uh, one of my best friends. I mean, uh, I am where I am because of my grandfather's investments in me. I spent almost every day with him. And uh, I remember it was on his birthday. I can't remember what birthday it was, but he, uh, I, I just took a walk and, and I, was, I just found a basketball and I just kicked it, you know, just being a kid, you know probably about 10 or 11 years old. So I kicked it, it broke one of the windows in the shop that he had built, you know, and, and it was his retirement. He, 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 was a, uh, he fixed tractors, sold tractors, all that stuff. Broke a window in the back and I was so afraid of him because he was just so strong, you know? Like, he's gonna kill me. Like, I remember thinking that, right? So it's his birthday. So I go in and I whisper to him and I see his coffee steaming and, you know, he's about to take a bite of his cake. And I said, I. I I made a mistake and, and I'm really sorry, you know? And he said, well, what is it? I said, I broke your window in, in your garage. And, and he said, let's go assess the damage. So we go back out there and I thought he was just gonna, you know, yeah, I thought he was gonna scream at me. I thought he, he was gonna like hit me, you know, something like that. He had never done that before, obviously. But uh, when we went out there, he just kind of smiled at it. And he, and he taught me how to replace a window, how to fix it. Uh, he, we cut up some wood and then he said, hey, go upstairs and get a marker for me. I ran upstairs to grab a marker and he drew a picture on it. And he said, this is Pappy's birthday present, you know, from Zach. He, he drew a picture of both of us. We were both smiling, his arm was around me in the picture. And then uh, uh, as I become a father, you know, it's my, my son's probably five or four or five years old. He gets a hockey puck and shoots it through my garage window. And uh, we did the same thing. He said, hey, go upstairs and get me a, get me a marker, you know. <laughs> And then we drew the same thing on there, you know? Yeah. It's powerful, isn't it? Yeah. It's grace, isn't yeah. it? It's a demonstration of grace. I love that. Yeah. yeah. His hands really could have brought a lot of pain, you know? <laughs> but I saw his hands craft something and I equate his hands with love, you know? And, and that's, that's the call as fathers. When our kids see our hands, what are they going to think? These hands embraced me. These hands loved me. These hands comforted me, you know? Yeah. That's the inspiration of that. So I'm so, just thinking of like, we have a lot of children in our sphere of influence that are fatherless. Yeah. And I love that you and your wife, you know, have taken 
in foster children, but mm -hmm. how important is that for the godly men in our communities to father the fatherless and what does that look like? Yeah, in the very first chapter, we go through the, a little bit of the statistics. In, I think it was 2008, the United States uh, found the, the issue of fatherless, like really the epidemic of fatherlessness in our nation. And with, with a child who is, uh, has a father in the home, uh, they are 75% less likely to, uh, to um, be in jail, incarcerated for a violent crime. You know, uh, even when it comes to the, the grades on the report card are better. And you know, this doesn't dishonor by any means single moms because single moms, there's a grace. And a lot of times, even, even with that, you'll see God fills in the gaps. He brings somebody in to be a father figure. And when a child has that security, it's my belief that uh, a, a, with a, a son, uh, mom's job is to, to bring security in his manhood, but dad's job is to teach him how to be a man. And with a fatherless epidemic in the United States, with father, fathers out, boys don't know how to become men. And they need somebody to be an example. And even in my, in my thank you in the book, I have men who were father figures to me in that. And they showed me how to be a man. My grandfather showed me how to be a man. My uncle Dave showed me how to be a man. My, uh, my, my father-in-law, my father, and uh, uh, my, one of my pastors, Larry Betancourt, they showed me what manhood was, and it is vital for us to step into those roles in, right now. And when he just says something like, what mm -hmm. does it mean and what does it look like to be a man? Mm -hmm. Can you define that? Because I think there's a lot of young men, they hear that, they're like, but they don't, I know like, you know, men in my family and just men around me, they didn't have fathers around. So what does that look like with some tangible things of, this is what it looks like to be a man and yeah, especially can, a man of We God. can talk about that for a couple of hours, <laughs> I think, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I love uh, the idea of tough and tender, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, one of the values in this as well is, is that um, we stand guard to protect. Like that is a, that is a job of mine to, to keep our family safe. And, um, you know, even, I can't get into too many of the details of fostering and, and all of that, but there's a safety aspect of it that I can give the children as they come into our home that they that I can tangibly sense whenever I hold them they feel safe right now you know and so tough and tender you know hey uh, I'm gonna stand up for what's right I'm gonna do the right thing no matter how much it hurts me that's tough but I'm gonna do it because I'm led by love I'm, I'm filled with compassion and I think we have to understand that as men uh, that that our role is vital and that that we can we can do the right thing no matter how much it hurts, but it's let out of compassion. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I hope I'm yeah. clear. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I'd like you, if you would, to look at the camera and just speak to that one out there. Maybe they didn't have that father figure. Maybe they're a, a, a man who's, some, something's really hitting their spirit of what you're, you've been saying, but they didn't have that father. They didn't have that, that person to show them. And uh, what would you give them hope about in, in following God's plan for them as a man? Mm. Yeah, I would encourage you to first receive the love of the Father, um, to not be caught up in, in what you didn't have, but to have a vision to provide for somebody else something that you, that you never got. Um, but you have to have a relationship with the Father, it's my belief, um, and then also begin to look backwards and, and, and thank God for all the men who came into your life. Uh, who showed you the way to be a man and, and how to be a father, how to be a, how to be a man. But you're not alone. There's men everywhere who feel this way. And, uh, and, and don't let bitterness hold you back from uh, who God's called you to be. You have a call in your life and you have a purpose and, and God has a plan for your life. Just lean in and, uh, and, and learn to receive his love. That's it. That is so good. Pastor Zach, thank you for being with us. The Father Guy, The Father Code, I'm sorry, by Zach Blair. Great book, uh, easy read, but a long application, lifetime application. So I, I highly recommend that. What we're going to ask you to do now, Zach, is we're going to see if we can embarrass you on television here. Uh, <laughs> we're going to ask you Bible questions about fathers. Yeah. Because we got this little thing we call Stump the Host. So we have not seen these questions. Zach certainly hasn't seen these questions, but we're gonna ask and we'll, we'll, we'll all jump in there. So uh, this one, first one should be easy. Whose name means father of a great multitude? Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham. Abraham. Are we, we good? We good with one. Abraham? Yeah. Abraham. 
All right, yeah. there we go. Awesome. <laughs> so we have like that's like from Genesis 17 and verse five. And here's our next question. Honor thy father and thy mother is one of the 10 commandments. Which one? I'm going to say it's either two or three. It's up there. It's pretty high because it's the first one is. So uh, the first it's the first one with a promise. Uh, first one with a promise. Yeah, we know that. I'm going to go with two number. or three. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Oh, so we gotta I pick, trust that. I trust like, that love the Lord God. Don't have Sydney any idols. Gut. And then like honor your father and mother. Get it. I feel third. like it has to be the third. I'm with you on third that. Third one. Look at that. Third or the fifth. Oh. Oh no. We did them, you know, with the kids. I, oh, think, Mindy, I, I, don't, think, I don't know, I don't guys. Know. I don't know. Do you know for sure? <laughs> no. Then we're going to have to go, go with Sydney. third. Yeah. Oh, oh no. You oh, were oh, right. Oh, oh, dang it. You oh, got it. You got it. Right here. That's for the, the children's <laughs> lessons. I was like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was number sure. five. Oh. I'm oh. sorry, Amanda. Oh. Hey, oh. we're in this together, so. Yeah, we're all in this together. That, we all own the X here. Uh, <laughs> All right, so what does James say is the source of every good and perfect gift? Mm, I got it. You got it? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. go ahead. The Father above. Yeah. The yeah. Father above. Yeah. Father above. Yeah. What? More specific. No. Every good and Who perfect gift. Who changes not as shifting shadows. I mean, that's all I got. Every good every, and perfect gift perfect comes gift. from the Father above. Can we use above. our Bible? The Father above. <laughs> is it Father of Lights? No. Father above. Every good and perfect. The Father Okay, they're going to give it to us. Good. Here we go. Father, yes. of Father of Lights. Oh, okay, oh, I mentioned that. Okay. I mentioned that. Yes. You, you can go back and find X us. Father of Lights, yeah. You can X us, Rick. No, it's yeah. all right. We're not going to, you know. Oh, well, Got we're going to dig into God's Word right now. We have a verse from Joshua 24, verse 15. And it says, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that is a wonderful choice. Talk to us about how important it is for every father to serve the Lord. Yeah, I love the context of that, of that scripture. Joshua has taken the Israelites into the promised land. And he, he essentially says to them, you're not strong enough to do this. And they say, yes, we are. We're going to do it. And he's like, no, you're not. Because you have to depend on God's strength to lead your family in that way. And he said, hey, listen, you do what you want to do. I'm drawing a stake in, I'm, I'm putting a stake in the ground. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm going to serve the Lord and my family's coming with me. It is vital. There's a, I think it's a over 90% chance that if a father, if a father follows God and draws this line in the sand, that the whole, fa uh, the whole family will. But statistically, it jumps down if it's any other role in the family. Wow. The, father's, the father's role is vital. Yes. Yeah. We need our dads. Well, well we do. And, and uh, again, so often we've, we've seen where uh, we, we can impress on God or uh, project on God the things that we felt from our own father. Mm, yeah. and, uh, and I had a great dad. I've said that here many times. Wonderful, wonderful man of God. But God was even better than my dad. And God is better than your dad. And God, uh, it, God wants us to be those, the men of God, but he wants us to understand there is a father in heaven that loves you, that cares for you, that, that, that even sent his son to rescue you from where you were into the place you need to be. There is a good, good father in heaven. There is a good, good father in heaven. You know, one thing I just love about this whole conversation about like our heavenly father and just even want to encourage you that I know there are so many of you that are watching that did not have a father. And if we can be honest and real, it wasn't really a good situation. But you know, one thing I've just seen in the people in my life that didn't have good dads around or absent fathers is that when they knew they had the heavenly father. Isn't that interesting? Like that's a name that we can call him. I love sometimes in my hardship, I have cried out, Abba, Father, in the lowest of my moments in my life, just saying, all I had to say is Abba. And there would be moments where I felt his tender arms around me and just his presence. And so today, if you've been watching this whole program and there's this deep father wound, that is in your spirit, that is in your heart, that is crushing. We just want to encourage you today to know that there is a good, good father. His name is the Heavenly Father. He is your Abba Father. And you can call on him at any moment and any time. And he is with you. And so we just want to encourage you, even right now, if you feel like a little burdened or heavy or this conversation is bringing up some things, give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483. It's so good, Sydney. I, I just believe that the Lord desires to do a beautiful work in and through your life. And as Tom was referring to, you know, we need Jesus. 
turn to him today. Today, just run to him. He's running to you the moment you glance at him. His heart is for you. And as Pastor Zach said, you know, you were called for this. And you've got what it takes when you lean into God to fulfill that purpose of a father in your own child's life or in another person's life. So don't let this moment pass. We, we say this often, but there are times and moments where the Spirit of God is drawing us. And we need to cherish those. And we need to, to press in. When the Spirit of God, don't resist the Spirit of God. Pull, let, let, let the Spirit of God pull you towards the Father, towards the, 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 the person that loves you the most, the one that, that cares for you, and the one that wants to put His will and His way upon your life. Whatever's gone before, God has a new and a perfect way for you. Draw to Him, draw close to Him today, and you'll find that, and you'll find His heart too. Have a great day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, helping people connect to God through her uplifting music and heartfelt messages. Christian pop artist Estella Kirk shares her music and inspirational story of overcoming fear and self-doubt by reminding us that God is with us every step of the way. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television t-shirt, where'd you get it? I am so glad that you asked. You know, this is an exclusive offer for the month of June for you to receive this one-of-a-kind CTVN t-shirt. You can support and sport your favorite Christian television network this summer when you go to barbecues, hanging out with family, and having tons of fun. Oh man, that is so much fun. And speaking of Cornerstone Television, I love their programming, especially that Hope Today show. Yes, we love Hope Today and all of the programs. And you know, with your best gift, request your Cornerstone Television Network t-shirt when you give this month. We have sizes from extra small to 6XL. It is 100% cotton. It is quality, and we want you to have this on you today. That's right. We have one for everyone, and you get to represent the station you love with your own logo t-shirt. You'll enjoy this wearable reminder that hope happens here as together we spread the love of Jesus every day. You know, we cannot do it without you. When you give, you help us to impact Pittsburgh and beyond, reaching those of all nations and generations because we know people need to know the hope and the love of Jesus like never before. So why don't you give us a call at 888-665-4483 and request your very own Cornerstone TV t-shirt. That's right. You can also give online at ctvn.org slash donate. We would love to see you out in public somewhere wearing this t-shirt. Maybe we'll have ours on too. Thanks for supporting us. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.